real uh, topic, which is the acute phase response. But uh, I hope uh, you may realize that it's very actual. Can you go to the next one? Um, Heidi, so the, the definition of the acute phase response is, uh, uh, is such an important defense mechanism that, you know, we cannot survive without that. So this is uh, a, a reaction to an aggressive uh, damaging agent, and it consists of a local uh, reaction and of a systemic reaction. So the most frequent systemic symptom is fever, it's a quite trivial, and fast uh, further symptoms are adenemia, you don't, you don't want to move, yeah, you have less of appetite, and somnolence. And um, we know now for uh, 50 or 60 years that uh, these reactions are mediated by acute phase mediators called acute phase cytokines. The most important now is the IL-6, interleukin-6. The first one we studied was interleukin-1, the first pyrogen, uh, TNF-alpha interferon gamma, which is called the immune interferon. But, um, uh, you know, we have uh, data that interferon gamma is also one of the first cytokines uh, generated. So cytokines are mainly produced by mononuclear phagocytes, as you know, at the site of aggression. This is, can be, of course, the lung, the kidney, the gallbladder, the heart. Every, in every organ where tissue damage is going on, the main target, the main target of the cytokines, of these acute phase cytokines, is the liver. The next, uh, the next uh, uh, slide. <clears throat> um, again, as I mentioned, the acute phase reactions, defense reaction to, of the body to the to tissue damage. The tissue damage can be induced by different microorganisms, bacteria, viruses, fungi, parasites. It can also be induced by trauma, burning, ischemia, heart attack, stroke, or circulatory vascular disturbances. Tissue damage can be also induced by recurrent inflammatory reaction, as it takes place in so-called chronic inflammatory diseases like rheuma, rheumatoid arthritis, chronic inflammatory bowel diseases, and other autoimmune conditions. But these have to be completely separated from the, from the acute phase, from the first acute phase reaction. Next slide. Next slide. So the, you know, the very simple, very simple, um, the very simple first uh, test you can do is, is uh, to do perform electrophoresis of the, the serum, and you will see that the uh, this is a separation of the proteins in the blood. This is the albumin, and the acute phase proteins will be would be contained in these curves here, and one of the most prominent become the alpha one and the trypsin. The next slide. Uh, this is just uh, you don't need to read that, but this is just a. A, a list of uh, uh, proteins, uh, of the acute phase proteins, which are um, uh, uh, upregulated during acute phase reaction through the uh, increased synthesis in the liver. And there are also uh, proteins which, uh, um, which decrease during acute phase reaction, and the most prominent is albumin. The next slide. Just to give you uh, an idea, the next slide, please. Um, as you know, the most prominent acute phase proteins, which we use uh, in everyday life in the clinic, is free reactive protein. And the other one is which behaves similarly, which is less well known, is serum amyloid A. And their uh, serum level can increase up to thousandfold. Next slide. Uh, other positive acute phase proteins is uh, fibrinogen, which is one of the most prominent, and the serum level of fibrinogen increases up to up to 20-fold. Other positive acute phase proteins are complement, cerebroplasmin, 
alpha-1 antitrypsin, haptoglobin, and uh, more uh, other. Uh, next slide. Uh, as I mentioned, the most prominent negative acute phase protein is the uh, albumin. This is the most prominent protein synthesized by the hepatocytes. Next slide. Um, as I mentioned before, the, ta the main target organ of the cytokines produced at site of, uh, of injury is the liver. And, um, and uh, the, the, the proteins uh, wh which are interested are secretory proteins on the one side, but also intracellular proteins are modified by acute phase reactions. The next slide. Um, this here is the list of the acute phase cytokines. I don't know if where you see you can see that they are the IL-1 type cytokines and the IL-6 uh, type cytokines. But as I mentioned, the most prominent are IL-1, TNF alpha, and IL-6. We have learned a lot about this acute phase reaction by using two different models of uh, acute phase reaction. The one is uh, the turpentine oil uh, um, induced uh, sterile abscess, uh, let's say in the muscle, in the rat, for example, and the other one is the injection of this, uh, the uh, endotoxin, the acute phase, uh, the, the um, gram-negative uh, protein of the bacterial wall. Next slide. Uh, more than 35 years ago, I was uh, able to use the first recombinant interleukin-1 um, uh, cytokines then, uh, together with uh, Charles Dinarello. Next slide. We um, treated, next slide please, we treated isolated hepatocytes with the interleukin-1, with the recombinant interleukin-1. We could show that in the same sample of uh, of the uh, culture, we could show that there is an increase of factor B as a positive acute phase protein, a decrease of uh, albumin, and again an increase of seroamyloid A in the same sample, showing that there was an upregulation induced by IL-1 and a downregulation of albumin induced by IL-1. The next slide. Uh, on the other hand, we were also interested to see what, what happens outside of the liver during the acute phase reaction. Next slide. For this uh, purpose, we treated the, anim the, the mice with endotoxin and we extracted the RNA from the different organs. Then uh, did northern blood analysis and the filters were hybridized with different probes, DNA probes specific for seroamyloid A, for factor B and for alpha and beta actin. And as you can see, the, uh, there is a, an upregulation of acute phase proteins, not only in the liver, when the animals were treated with endotoxin, but also in the heart, in the spleen, in the lung, in the intestine, and in the kidney, in the same way. That means that proteins which are expressed in the liver are also expressed in other organs. But of course, the liver is the, the organ which is responsible for the generation of the serum level of those proteins. And here we treated the, uh, the animals with interleukin-1, and we showed that there is a dose-dependent uh, induction of seroamyloid A and factor B in the liver and in the lung also. And the same is true for the macrophages. So we isolated macrophages from the peritoneal cavity or macrophages from the blood, and we could see that those, pro those cells also express the acute phase proteins, and they behave, these genes behave in the same way as they behave in the liver and the other organs. The next slide. Um, uh, after the, we studied the IL-1, we just also studied IL TNF-alpha, and IL-6 was then three years later which was identified, and we showed the next slide, that the, uh, the at the molecular level, next slide please, we found that the three, the three uh, cytokines, they behave in the same manner. You know, dose response uh, um, for C3 
uh, for ceruloplasmin and uh, for IL-1, this is for TNF-alpha, and at the same time, it decrease of albumin synthesis. This is the protein level, then we treat the animals, the mice, intrapenitronially with IL-6, and we show a dose depends induction of serum amyloid A and an increase of factor B. So this is the three cytokines, main cytokines, they behave in a similar way. Next slide, the question is of quantity. We can skip this, this, uh, uh, this picture. The question is the quantity, which one of these cytokines, next slide please, is more or less involved in the uh, uh, different acute phase reaction, uh, in the different patterns of damage. This is a, a, an experiment we did to show what happens with intracellular proteins during the acute phase reaction. This was melanocortin-4 in the liver. You see here is expressed in the cytoplasm, these grains here. And in the acute phase a rat uh, treated with turpentine oil, you see that there is almost a disappearance of melanocortin, uh, uh, this receptor in the, in the liver. That means that, next slide, the acute phase reaction uh, 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 yeah, it does, not, does not only involve the secretory proteins, but also the intracellular proteins. Again, here, the melanocortin, this is not background. These are grains distributed in all the cytoplasm, as you can see here. And there is a, a strong decrease of this protein in the liver during the acute phase reaction. The same is true, for example, for the thyroid hormone receptors. And so we have during acute phase a reduction of the activity of thyroid hormones for this reason, why the receptors, because the receptors are, di are diminished by the cytokines. Next slide. Uh, how actual this uh, topic is shows this publication in Embo Journal. So uh, Chinese scientists looked at the um, at the uh, production of interleukin-6 uh, in patients infected with COVID, uh, with the, uh, coronavirus 2. And next slide. Um, this is a bad slide, but it just wants to show that the, while, for example, seroactive protein is measured in milligram per liter, the uh, IL-6, these cytokines are measured in picogram. Uh, that means that it's really tiny amounts of mediator. Next slide. Uh, here are uh, shown different patients. This is CT scan of the of the chest, and you see here these uh, the uh, 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 ground glass uh, opacities in both sides of the lungs, and you see that there was an increase of interleukin six at the beginning. And the, the patient recovered, and uh, you know this is a better picture than the first one. And the IL-6 went down. The next, the same is with the next patient, uh, patient two and patient three. In all these cases, there was an increase uh, of IL-6 at the beginning, and the IL-6 uh, decreased then with the, uh, the healing uh, process. Uh, but there are also other patients like these. Or where the situation became worse and IL-6 uh, increased. It, it shows that, you know, you may not need to do CT scan in every patient, but just monitoring IL-6. The next slide. On the other hand, you know, we have uh, the acute phase proteins like CRP, and it may not, you know, not necessary to measure IL-6, which may be expensive. As you see here, this patient, you know, uh, was quite healthy at the beginning, developed uh, 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 infiltrates in the lung, and uh, at the same point, time point, CRP was elevated, but then, you know, the infiltration disappeared and the um, CRP level decreased. Next slide. Um, this is another example. I think it's just a repetition, but it shows that, you know, not always IL-6 is the, me the main mediator. There are situations where they see the clinical pictures worsen, but IL-6 become normal. So 
uh, you know, we may have different situation of damage and uh, it may be that different cytokines are then involved. The next slide. But this, uh, uh, this um, story of uh, acute phase cytokines were, uh, you know, interpreted uh, mostly from rheumatologists that, you know, would be uh, similar to the rheumatoid arthritis if, you, if we inhibit IL-6, you may, we may have improvement of the disease. This is not true for acute phase situation. In this case, for example, this study, patients were treated with an antibody against IL-6 receptor, and this is a, a paper published uh, uh, just uh, in March. Next slide. And this trial showed that uh, the antibody against the receptor was ineffective. It didn't improve. This uh, it did not improve overall survival. I would even guess that there was a worsening of the survival because next slide. Because acute phase reaction is a defense system mediated by cytokines which should not be called pro-inflammatory. You know, the IL-6, IL-1, TNF, alpha, they are called pro-inflammatory cytokines. So that means that, you know, you should inhibit them, but this is not the real interpretation. You know, IL-6 is defense mediator in the first inflammatory reaction. And that's the message I want to give. Thank you. Questions? Okay. Antonio? Yeah. Okay, no. go ahead. No, I was I was just thinking about this IL-6 in COVID-19 because, I mean, you, I think you are right to say that, you know, that, that you, you should not call it pro-inflammatory, but, but there is also no question that, I mean, it, during the, the high severity of COVID-19 is correlated with high level of IL-6 and, and, and other inflammatory cytokines, or, or you don't think at all that? No, there is a lot of confusion. You know, there is really a lot of confusion. And it is, I think, it, it, it's not good that rheumatologists came on the, on the, you know, on the table starting to give antibodies, all, yeah, all kind of antibodies, inhibiting. And now there is a, there is a paper where, again, Chinese scientists measured uh, the RNA, you know, and they found that uh, under the corticosteroids, you get a delay of clearance, you know, because you uh, inhibit the, um, you know, the immune reaction against, the, the acute phase reaction against the aggressor. Uh, and that's, um, there is no one, you know, Anna Kirna, I mean, against IL-1, uh, you know, it didn't work. And, uh, and anti-IL-6 didn't work. There are several antibodies against IL-6 didn't work. So um, I think it's, um, it's, the message should be, this is not pro-inflammatory. Of course, you have the so-called, the so-called chronic inflammatory bowel disease where we, we treat the patients with antibody against TNF. It blocks the reaction, but this is another story. This is, uh, you know, um, yes. Dr. Kao? Yes. Uh, you know, the traditionally, traditionally we believe the IL-6 or TNF alpha is belong to the pro-inflammatory cytokines, even in the cancer and uh, in the very serious infection like a COVID-19. So, um, you know, you use the, you know, the antibody neutralize this IL-6 and uh, do not, the patient do not get the benefit. Do you think have another kind of possibility that is that they use that kind of antibody too late? I mean, uh, people are very sick, and, uh, and uh, at yeah. this moment, you give them the antibodies, probably not helpful. But uh, you know, no. the, we have, uh, you know, in my point of traditional point of view, uh, IL-6 
belong to some kind of pro-inflammatory cytokines. In Chinese traditional medicine, we believe it's uh, belong to the yin yang, yin yang, you know, the immunity yin yang, right? So that L6 belong to the yin, I think the not good. Uh, I think that this is, a, so no. do you want to? No, what? Well one has to understand i didn't have time to explain everything of course i didn't tell you what those acute phase proteins are good for okay so if interleukin 6 induces a huge dramatic change of protein synthesis in the liver this has to have a, a, an aim you know the aim is to go into the area of damage and try to you know to uh, um, uh, yeah, to reduce as as much as possible the damage by yeah. you know antiproteases alpha one antitrypsin uh, a, a kind of bunch of other proteins okay yeah. and uh, and if you don't have IL six there are a few cases there's a publication now in in uh, journal of experimental medicine you may have problems because you know IL six doesn't work. So the the first defense, and that's why you know every in a, everyday life in the clinic, you know you always measure the markers of reaction because you need to know you need to know what's going on, and then you may use antibiotics to kill the bacteria, you know, and and then you have recovery. Okay, but the first the first reaction you have to have is the that the aggressor has to be, you know. Uh, stopped and the damage has to be stopped. And if you if you eliminate the mediators, you don't get you don't have that. And then you know the damage increases. That's why that's why I believe the treatment of uh, of patients with COVID patients with antibody is wrong. Also because you really don't know what is the cause of interleukin six increase. The first is maybe the virus, but after that, you know, the damage can be induced by other things. Yeah. You know, people don't get people don't get water. You know, when they are sick, they have fever, they they get th they thirsty and they lose weight, they lose fluids, and this induces ischemia, ischemia everywhere in the in the brain, in the heart, you know, and this increases also the uh, interleukin six level. So. At the first, in the acute attack, these are defense mediators. So they shouldn't be stopped. They shouldn't be inhibited. Mm. Yeah, sure. Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, other questions? Antonio, I mentioned the gamma interferon. Which is which is supposed to be the uh, immune interferon, but it's also the acute phase cytokine. Okay, so you know, I I got uh, one more question for you. You know the, <clears throat> you know how the liver functions, uh, the role of the liver functions in the process of uh, COVID nineteen. I mean, the, the, according to your point of view, you know, the, all these acute protein, acute inflammatory protein or any others, they produced all, they might be, you know, the degraded in the liver. So right. the liver function is not, is not functioning normal. So directly lead to the, the serology of this COVID-19. So yeah. how you how, how you think about this, the liver functions in the this COVID-19 progress? Good. Yes. I mean, normally uh, there is no damage. It's, you know, the liver is, uh, is not involved unless, first of all, you don't give enough nutrition. That's what happens in these patients. Many of patients are malnourished at the beginning. They don't have enough proteins. And if they go into the hospital, they don't get enough to eat. And they don't get, 
they don't get enough proteins. So if you don't have enough proteins, you cannot produce enough albumin and you cannot produce uh, enough acute phase proteins. Uh, I hear you. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, patients with liver disease um, may not have that much or that many problems because, you know, the, the, the liver is a big organ and uh and can manage unless you don't you don't have really pro uh, advanced liver cirrhosis can manage the situation the problem is the body has to have enough water and enough food calories but not not only you know sugar and and lipid but proteins and that's what happens during uh when patients become critically ill and uh, uh, are transferred in the ICU, they are all underfeeded. They all have deficiency of calories and of proteins. And that's this is a big problem. That's probably one of the main reasons for long COVID. You know, if they are lucky and they can be discharged from the hospital, they have lost weight, they have lost muscle, they have lost, you know, and they have problems to recover.